Welcome to the Uptime Wind Energy Podcast, where we feature the latest advancements in wind energy technology. I'm your host, Alan Hall, president of WeatherGuard Lightning Tech, along with my co-host, Joel Saxon, vice president of North American Sales for Wind Power Lab. And we are here at Wind Europe 2023 in Copenhagen, Denmark, and we're fortunate, fortunate to have with us Chris Cheslak, the director at Bladebug, to give us an update on all things Bladebug. Chris, welcome back to Thank the program. Thank you very much. I don't know if fortunate is the right word, but yeah, pleasure to be back here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm very fortunate to be here. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, so there's a lot has happened since we have spoken to you last. You've been a frequent uh, guest on, on the podcast, thank goodness. Um, we're glad to have you. But Bladebug's made a number of improvements since the last time we've seen you. We, we saw you last in Hamburg, Germany. You want to give us an update on things that are happening? Yeah, so uh, when we last spoke in Hamburg, we were presenting our robot and we've been developing and refining our ultrasonic um, non-destructive testing capabilities on blades in situ. So we've spent a couple of, we spent winter basically hunkered down, uh, refining a couple of different uh, OEM systems in our platform. So our robotic platform, we've got uh, a, a form of ultrasonic inspection using a, a technology called like full matrix capture, which is really interesting. It gives a, a very nice visual indication of, of defects and composites. And then we're also using a more classical uh, UT approach of phased array, okay. uh, which gives us you know, a very consistent approach of inspecting composites which has been used for you know, 20, 30 years. So why one over the other? Because I think it's, there's, there isn't one shoe that fits all. So okay. it's a case of the ability or the beauty of having a platform such as Bladebug is you can have a solution, be it with different equipment to overcome a challenge that you're looking for on a blade. So yeah. if you have a particular issue on a blade in a certain location, it might be that laminate is too thick for the frequency of the probe of one type of um, equipment. You can change it to your other uh, thing and go, right, this is yeah. for this particular area, for this, for this particular inspection task, I can use this equipment and for the other one, it's it's that. So okay. it's about having the flexibility to ensure that you can do the job at hand. Right. Yeah, for those who don't know blades that well, I mean, you can be in the root section and you can have four inches of, of material. You can yeah. go out to the tip and you can be down to a quarter inch. Yeah. Right. So having the right tool for the right job, got to have it. Exactly. And again, you have different parts of the blade, which is just monolithic, like laminate structures, yeah. but yeah. Then you have sandwich panels as well. And being able to understand, you know, those different challenges and having different solutions to understand what's going on that you can't see from just a visual inspection is really important. So the blade bug platform is host to this ultrasonic testing uh, instrument. Yep. Right. So it, does it just plug right into the to the belly of the beast? Exactly. Sort of thing? Yeah. Okay. So we have so the the, the blade bug is a, a platform where we have a belly, uh, like a payload bay that we can okay. interchange different tools in. Uh, so the robot gobbles them up, um, and we essentially the clever thing about blade bug is is our ability to manipulate tools over the surface mm. without yeah. additional equipment. So it is this really a case of we have six robot arms controlling the body. So we've got very precise CNC control over our system. And what that means is we can do a task which is um, really repetitive. So if you wanted to scan an area, we can program that path into the robot, press a button, and it will just follow that path time and time again. And so it removes that variation that you might get if you're a person dangling from a rope on a blade, you know, you're trying no, to do this, no feedback, so you don't get yeah, quite right, a good scan. Right. For us, it's really about making a consistent um, path, but that means you get consistent data. And so if you, have, if you wanted to do a, a, an inspection campaign over a number of blades, you can be confident that you can compare like for like for like, because you know that that is precise and you haven't, you know, sure. you're in the same location, it's the same path, it's the same parameters that you've used and all those things. And you get a much, you know, it's just, it, again, it's the quality of the data that you have that you can make those assessments and decisions about what you do next. Yeah, we were in the booth next door just a little bit ago. I was talking with uh, Chris about some stuff with Wind Power Lab, possibly. And seeing the some of the videos you have of the robot operating, where the actual NDT head is making contact with the blade and the blade engineers in the background kind of, kind of messing with the robot. Not the robot itself, but the blade piece trying to set, show this could be the movement when you're up tower. If you've ever been up tower as a technician, of course, you know when you're on ropes. If you're up there in an eight, 10 meter wind, you're moving all around, that blade tip is, is swinging, a, it could swing a meter, mm -hmm. right? So the video that uh, Chris showed me, that the there's a pressure sensor on the backside of the NDT probe. So that is making consistent pressure, consistent contact uh, with a couplant delivery system. If you, get, if you know anything about NDT, of course you need that um, to get really good results all the time, not alone, let alone the positional accuracy mm -hmm. of, of repeatability, but actually the, the testing itself. You know, when you're pushing on 
uh, whether it's a metal coupon or if it's a composite or whatever you are, NDT, the coupling is the, if that doesn't happen, right? Nothing works. Right. Right. Yeah. You get no data. Right. Um, so they have cleverly developed the control system within the robot to keep that probe right on the uh, the subject matter that it needs to scan. So yeah. kudos. And to this that. is really about just refining that process, which is what it is. And it's a case of, you know, we've had all of winter when inspections can't be done because of the weather yeah. to really refine it. And so now we are going out in the field, looking for clients, you know, really validating the system. So the difference that we had in, in Hamburg, we're like, oh, you know, we're not ready yet. Um, but that's what we've done over winter. We've got ready, we've got two systems ready to go out there. So we're ready to go out to the field and do this high value um, oxygenic inspection to look for defects beneath the surface. And again, it's so complementary to like the drone inspections out there, if you see some defects, heaven forbid there might be some serial defects in blades that might need um, looking at, you know, we can go to those areas and have a very consistent approach to how we, we look for those. So then if, if, if Bladebug has been deployed, to look for like a serial defect, then the accuracy becomes super important because those serial defects tend to happen relatively in the same area, mm -hmm. right? So you want to be able to have some exact location so Blakebug can actually get you to that exact location yeah. and, re and have repeatable data. Now, you've been doing some work in France, and I think I saw that on your LinkedIn post. So if I'm speaking out of that turn. That was last, yeah, that was last August or June we did that. Yeah, it was, it was last summer, right? Yeah. So what have you learned from that campaign from France and, and what, what do you take into this upcoming spring in terms of knowledge? Um, so I think the thing we learned from that is it is um, firstly challenging to get equipment from the UK into Europe but that aside <laughs> um, we learned a lot so that was a that was almost like a baptism of fire you know that was one yeah. of the biggest uh, offshore turbines or onshore turbines that we were on bigger offshore turbines but that was a 90 meter hub height sort of understanding the challenges of how to get on that blade but what we were able to do is do a scan 80 meters from the ground in a particular area where we know there was a, a potential serial defect and what that really showed us was two things one we can do it two there is refinement and improvements that we can make on, sure. on getting the blade sure. bug onto that position and two, it really validated that we can have an NDT composites expert be on hand, albeit 600 kilometers away. So they can dial in remotely, they can look at that data, they can influence how those settings and parameters are done to ensure that you get good data. So one of the challenges that I think NDT in general has is that there's not many skilled people who can do it. There's right. fewer who can do that on ropes, who yeah. would like to do that on ropes. And so this is about really democratizing that NDT capability and using the expertise, but they can be in the comfort of their own office and home and, and, and sort of analyze that data and really, you know, open up NDT, which is kind of, it's still a bit of like a, oh, that's like a bit specialist for me. It's like, well, no, it is specialist because there's not many people who can do it, but we are opening the door um, to that. Yeah. You know, at the beginning of the conversation, we talked a little bit about a couple of different methodologies that you guys were using. Mm -hmm. What is some of the new stuff that you're working on? New so there's really interesting new technology that uses a different form of non-destructive testing, not ultrasound. And that enables us to check for defects and damages in, in sandwich panel areas of blades, which is an area which you can't use ultrasound because the sound gets, there's air in it essentially, and the sound can't penetrate. So we're using technology that's been proven on uh, fiberglass boats where you have really thick, not necessarily best quality laminates, right. but you can clearly see areas of where there's delamination. You can clearly see things like the rib and spar structure of, of those boats. And that's a really interesting new bit of technology, which again, is another complementary uh, capability that we'll have alongside the NDT. So it's not just the monolithic areas. We can look for defects in the composites on the inner surface that you cannot do with any other form at the moment. That's huge for the industry. Yeah. And what's the magic there? The magic. So again, we're not we're not the magic source of what that technology. Is. So it's it's essentially tapping. Um, okay. But it's it's a much clever but it's, it's a much cleverer approach than just a, your your traditional tap testing approach. <laughs> so, so you could go like, you could go like so it's uh, gone old school, but new school. Yes. Yeah, so like the technician <laughs> uses a quarter. Right. It's yeah, like ping, yeah. right? The technician could hear it, but they're not really sure, right, what's, not going. sure what's going on. They know there's something, but they're not sure. Yeah. But now they've put smarts to it mm -hmm. and they can, they can see it. So and you can map it. Back. So you can end up with like heat maps of, of areas of composites and identify very clearly where defects are. So it's, it, 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 again, it's just building up that essentially arsenal of tools that solves problems. So it's, right. it's this real platform approach where we have this armory of equipment that we can go, right, for this equip for this inspection, we need this equipment because it's it's here. We know that that structure is gonna be whatever it is. Right, okay. So that's an innovative approach. Mm -hmm. I, I know 
there's not a lot of NDT testing in situ. Yeah, yeah. That, it, because it's so dang hard to do it, yeah, and particularly yeah. if it's raining. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's windy. It's hard to do it. So this may be the real first opportunity where NDT happens on the blade, particularly offshore, where it's going to be a problem. Now we can actually diagnose what's happening instead of decommissioning, which yeah. is what happens. A lot of just they just yeah. turn the turbine off until they can figure out what's going on. You can actually get in there, yeah. figure it out, and is it okay? It, yeah. Call Wind Power Lab to turn, see if you can turn it back on again. Well, right? I'm thinking about use cases for the technology as it grows, as you guys mm -hmm. scale, end of life extension. Oh, yeah. Right, oh, because yeah. right now it's like, well, you know, it's been up there for 20 years, we're not really sure. Right but now, you would have the capability to check the spark caps. Yeah. Make sure there's no, the, the you know, no delaminations happening. Right. Check check the trailing edge. Make sure that they're not starting to split and all that stuff that you can't see visually. Mm -hmm. But then you could have a level of comfortableness where you could sleep well at night, knowing that there's those blades are still yeah. out there running. Yeah. But you've checked uh, those, uh, you know, key areas. Yeah. And at the same time, end of warranty. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. When you hand over, it's like the OEMs. It's like they're yours now. They're done. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you can actually be confident that. What you're taking on is in good health. Yeah. So what does the summer look like? The summer looks like uh, Wind Power Labs <laughs> kindly giving us some work. Uh, we hope, yep. That's, yeah, so that's it, it's really about um, getting it out there, getting a lot more validation of the system, pilot commercial work with, with end users. Really for us, we just want to get on as many turbines, different sizes, different types as possible. And uh, that for us is is our challenge, and that's what we're, we're, we've built up to do over winter, get prepared for this, this season uh, and do that. In parallel, we're, we're currently raising, uh, so as a startup that's pre-commercial, we need to fund what we're doing. Um, sure. So we've been raising now, we were, we're due to close end of July, end of June. Um, so we've got some good progress, but the world seems to have changed over the last sort of six months and yes. uh, investing in tech, investing in, yeah, in startups. Funding. Is 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 hard graph. So I've been distracted a lot with with investment. It's, it's going okay. It's going well, but yeah. it's definitely something I just want to like close the lid on and just crack on with what we're doing because we've yeah. got a limited season and I just want to get on and, yeah. and do it. Yeah, but you you can't ignore. I think every innovative company that's here is doing two things simultaneously: they're fundraising and they're developing the technology, improving yeah. it out, and, and so the proving out part you've been working really hard on yeah and now it's when you you, you need to go right and you, yeah. need, you need funding to to get to that sort of next stage where you're deploying blade bug around the world that takes funding to do that there are, are still i think there's still a lot of opportunities but i i think you're echoing a lot of what i hear from mm -hmm. around the industry is uh, there's a lot of talk about renewable energy and there's a lot of talk about investment in that but not necessarily in the technologies that will create renewable energy. Yeah. Because you, you need to be not necessarily investing in software all the time. Yes. Which is where we see a software lot of investment. Software and AI. Yeah, yeah, because it's an easy investment that can see that it, it, it's a faster ramp up. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, if the wind turbines aren't running, we're not helping ourselves. And it takes tools like Bladebug to, to make that happen. Yeah, and the, the last few years, of course, COVID derailed the financial industry. Sure. Uh, sure. But now with uh, interest rates high all over the world, uh, VC Inflation, funding, banks failing. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah, but, uh, v, you know, VC funding and PE funding. It's tough to come by because uh, the that active capital out there is a little bit more leery. Everyone's a lot more risk averse. Yeah, and you know, yeah. in reality, we're, we're developing new tech. It, it's yeah, it's risky, but you know, we're confident in what we're doing. You've seen the videos and, yep. of what we can do. Um, yeah, so we just want to crack on and, and, and get on with that. But right. yeah, it's a, it's a bit more of a slog than I had a... Uh, it's not easy being oh, a founder. No, no, no. no, it wasn't great you, when You I didn't expect that. You, you wanted <laughs> yeah. to build a robot. Like, let's, let's go make a robot and get it to work. <laughs> yeah. They will come, They're, people will be knocking our door. Yeah, and again, it's... it's They are coming. They are coming, that's yeah. true. Um, but it is definitely, uh, you know, when you look back, it's like, okay, I wish I, not wish I'd done things slightly differently, but no. you definitely learn from this journey as being a founder, for yeah. sure. Well, you, you have to change with the changing times, yeah. right? I, I think we're a similar company. We do, we're in the lightning space, you're in the robot space, yeah. but we did years and years and years of grinding away, grinding away till we got to a product, and then we had to find the customers and develop that base, right? Yeah. Uh, that's normal. It's painful, but I'd rather see a company go through what you're going through than one that has the quote unquote rapid success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when that gets out and deployed in the field, that's when those companies have trouble. Spend the time, do the work, get the company founded right, get get your financials yeah. right, and then go do yeah. go do the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's 
I think you're taking the right approach here. Um, we, we talk to companies, Joel and I talk to companies every day, yeah. <laughs> that, are, that are trying to find the quick path. Yeah. And I, I always worry, is this, is this helping renewable energy or, or is it hurting it? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times it's hurting it. I'd rather see longer develop time frames. I like to see bigger companies come back in, like Avestis, which is doing some investing in companies, which yeah. is fantastic, GE's doing that. So there's a number of large OEMs investing in companies like mm -hmm. Bob, because they see the future yeah. and they know they need that That's to it. be successful. The closer we get to, like Alan and I, he said he's a lot of conversations with a lot of startups, a lot of, oh, companies, yeah. a lot of innovative companies. The closer you get to the VC and the PE space, sometimes you meet people, a lot of times you meet people, that's kind of like gives you a sinking feeling where they're playing a financial game yeah. rather than right. producing a solution. Right. Right there, it's a solution failed as a get rich quick scheme yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, man, you know, we'd really like to see more solutions out there uh, that can help the industry rather than just someone over here trying to make money. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that uh, you guys, like Alan said, the approach you're taking and the product that you've got, there's a real chance that you can add to the industry, right? There's, there's a shortage of technicians we already know. There's mm -hmm. a huge, there's a, short, there's a shortage of NDT people in mm -hmm. the world. So compare that and someone that can go up tower and do it, you're, you're in a tough position to find people. You're enabling the wind industry to do that. NDT up tower with robotics. It's a, it's a novel approach. Mm. And I think there's going to be some success. Yeah, there. no, I'm, again, it comes from what we originally set out to do, which is make wind turbines better, yeah. and that's still the focus. That's still the drive. Yeah. You know, it's it's this is a this is one part of what Bladebug can do to make that, but it is that whole ethos of we can make wind better. Yeah. yeah. So if everybody listening out there, and, and we've had Joel, I, I don't know how many times I've been stopped in the last two days here. Like you're the guy with the podcast. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. <laughs> Uh, so if, and there's a lot of operators here. Yeah. So if an operator wanted to reach out to Bladebug, how do they find you? How do they connect with you? Yeah, so um, website, uh, which is getting revamped imminently, actually. Oh, uh, which is, really? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I love your site. It's like one of the best websites for renewable energy products that I've seen. So okay. it's just going to refresh. So we're going to ah. a bit of an update because that um, has purposefully been kind of left updated for a bit of a while. So it's just a bit more information about what we do with the NDT and, and updates on that, but a bit of a refresh on like the logo yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, just to give us a bit of a, now uh, we're going into this commercial world, let's like, yeah. let's, you know, let's launch and, and do things uh, in a nice way. So we're working okay. on that. Um, LinkedIn, if you look at Bladebug, we've got a, a, quite a good uh, following now on LinkedIn on, on Bladebug, but yeah. also myself, Chris uh, Cheshlack, at, uh, or Chris at bladebug.co.uk is a, a way of getting in contact. We have invest at Bladebug if you're interested in investing as well. So it's, uh, there's lots of ways you can find us. We, we've, you know, if you like Bladebug in, we appear. We're, we're quite busy right. with that. <laughs> so. Well, Chris, it's great to see you in Copenhagen and we love having you back. So, uh, well, we should touch again after the summer. I would like to see how your summer yeah. went and uh, hear what's next for Bladebug. Definitely, thank you once again for having me on the show. It's, um, yeah, it's great and I listen every week. <laughs> I do, generally. <laughs> more of those, more of those. <laughs>